Welcome back everybody. It is so great to see you all again. Today I will take you into Capture 120 and Affinity Photo to show you my round trip process for stitching panoramics as well as doing HDR merges. So with that said, let's jump right in. Here we are in Capture 120. This is the default workspace view. Being that I'm a right-handed person and I'm also right-eyed, this workspace has always felt uncomfortable to me. So one of the beautiful things about Capture 120 is I can customize my workspace. And I've done so by putting the tool palette on the right as well as the thumbnails on the left. This feels so much more natural to me. And if you're coming from Adobe Lightroom, this is going to feel very familiar to you. As you can see, as I compare two images here, I've done some work already to what I'm gonna call my parent image compared to the native raw photos. And the reason I do that is I know that the Mavic Pro drones have terrible light fall off and the, they're not properly color corrected. And so for me, I wanna make sure that my parent image has the necessary adjustments and corrections to them before I apply those adjustments to the rest of the images in my series. And to do that, what I do is I go into the lens correction tool palette here and I make sure that my chromatic aberration, diffraction correction, and high distorted areas are all selected. And then from there, I adjust the light fall off. Now, I found that the light fall off in the Mavic Pro drones is really good at 34 to 50. It seems to really adjust well for that. Otherwise, if you push it too far, it looks like a white vignette. Okay, so from there, I made some simple adjustments. I adjusted my white balance. I went into the exposure tool tab here to adjust brightness, to increase the brightness to 15 and the saturation to 50. And then I pulled down my highlights by about negative 18. Since this was a fairly low dynamic range image, all I wanted to do was pull in some of the highlights here at the top of the building. Once that's all set, all you gotta do is go up here to the copy adjustments arrow, hold down shift and click all of your images in your series and then apply adjustments. Now Capture One will automatically apply all those adjustments to those images. Now that you've applied all of your settings to your other images in this series, it's time to export them from Capture One 20. To do so, simply click on the gear icon, choose TIFF Adobe RGB, but change your setting to 16-bit. Leave it uncompressed and the scale at 100%. Now for your output location, you wanna choose the original raw destination, but create a subfolder I've called mine Pano. And then down here at output naming, I've chosen the format to be Pano underscore the original image name. And then click on process. Now what Capture One's going to do is basically export those photos in that file format to the destination folder you have selected, and we will pull images from that folder in just a little bit. After your files have completed export, go to your parent file, right click and choose edit with affinity photo making sure that your settings are the same as your export settings from before for those of you that have seen my other videos you know that edit with command will create a brand new file and automatically add that to your photo library once i click on edit variant the file will automatically open in affinity photo now there's no need to touch this file at this moment what i'll have you do next is go up into file new panorama add and then navigate to your pano folder and highlight all of your pano image files click on open and then simply choose stitch panorama this will generate a very small thumbnail don't worry about being able to zoom in or anything this is just to show you that your panorama was a successful stitch click ok and now affinity photo is going to work its magic by blending in your different seams and everything and here we have our basic panorama. Now the reason why I wanted you to create this TIFF file is so that we can paste this image into this file, which when saved will automatically update in Capture 120. The next step here would be to go up into document, resize document, and make note of the pixel size. So we're at 4,638 pixels wide. So I'm gonna copy this part of the dimensions and remember this part. So then I go back to my parent file and I'm going to resize canvas. Choosing the center anchor, I will simply paste 
the setting from before and choose to unlock the aspect ratio. And when I resize this, I now have enough room to paste this image into this canvas. So we'll go back to our panoramic image, Command C or Control C to copy, Command or Control V to paste. Now I'm gonna turn off the base background layer. And when I click on save, choose save with layers. Once this image is saved in Affinity Photo, it automatically will update in Capture 120, but we're not done yet. Obviously we need to crop this image, so I'm going to hit C for the crop tool. I'm just gonna pull in and crop this image to my desired format. Double click the center, it'll set the crop. Now when I click Command S or Control S to save it, it'll automatically update that crop in Capture 120. So how about HDR merging? How is that best accomplished? Well, my process for HDR merging is pretty simple. I work with, once again, what I call my parent image. Now this image will have the majority of the exposure information that I want for a given photo. If it's a really high dynamic scene with blown out windows and stuff, I will take a duplicate image and photograph for just the scene out the windows. And then later on, blend the two together into one image. First things first is to go through my image and to edit it as if these windows and these highlights weren't blown out. My goal is to focus on the midtones and the colors and make sure I get that as, as close to real as possible. Uh, and here you can see that I've added a couple of layers where I reduce the yellow tones throughout the walls and then also where I reduce the blue tones that are spilling in from the windows because this is a gray fabric, not a blue fabric. Once I'm happy with the adjustments and the settings that I've applied to what I call my parent photo, I will copy those adjustments and settings to my secondary photo, which is for the window view, and then adjust for the white balance so that the outside looks natural. Using the command key, I will command click both raw files, choose edit with, affinity photo, making sure to maximize my file quality by choosing TIFF, 16-bit, uncompressed, using the Adobe RGB color profile. Once I've clicked on Edit Variants, those photos will open automatically in Affinity Photo. Once the images are opened in Affinity Photo, I'm going to copy my darker image and paste it into my lighter image. I'm going to rename this layer Window View. And then I'm going to hold down Option or Alt and then choose the mask layer. That's going to invert the mask so that I can see my bright underlying image. So from here, I will choose the B key, which will give me my brush tool. I wanna to make sure that my brush is at 100%, so click on zero, if yours isn't already, and make sure that I have a white color fill set. And then I simply paint in the window view. Now once I get to this area here, this is reflected glass, I don't want it to be as dark as this window view. I'm going to set my opacity to 70%, so just click the number seven, and then just gently brush in over this section. And down here, I say like a 20% would be more than adequate. And then I'm gonna take that 20% and I'm gonna fill in above here as well just to kind of bring those lights down a little bit. Obviously, that was a quick example of how I do my HDR blending. I prefer the natural, more um, realistic look that it delivers compared to using a, an HDR dedicated program. Uh, what I also like is the fact that once I've added my layers of the various brackets and I've blended everything in, I can save that, it'll automatically update into my Capture One catalog where I can either do further edits in Capture One or Affinity Photo, just like I showed you in my previous videos. Now, a little word of warning. If you are a high volume photographer, whether you're photographing homes or cars or whatnot, this process will definitely slow you down and I don't recommend it. You're better off using more of the automated features available in other programs. However, if you're looking to maximize the quality of your photographs, whether you're shooting fine art landscapes or studio still lifes with light painting or even the type of architectural work that I do, this process will yield you much higher quality results that you have more and more control over compared to the more automated systems. And the benefit is 
Capture One and Affinity Photo work very well together as long as you understand the process of saving those layered TIFFs or PSD files, which I've shared in previous videos. You can see linked below. Now with that said, I wanna thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. I would love it if you would like this video, share it, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Until next time, God bless.